Chapter 2 brought us a new map, a new feel, and all new modes. And here comes a brand new competitive mode, Squad Arena. You know, in previous seasons, you know, we had a lot of duos, we had a lot of solos, and even trios, but never before have we seen the main competitive focus of a season being on squads. Squads are like way different from the other modes because squads are just much more chaotic. You know, they have way more people in later zones due to the large teams and ability to reboot and are just way more difficult to keep under control. So that's why we're here today, to give you guys a comprehensive guide on competitive squad domination. What's going on, guys? It's the Motivation Guy. That's right, the one and only Keith Allen. Hey, food for thought. Are you struggling with low self-esteem? Are you struggling with just, like, negative thoughts about yourself? Do you ever feel like you're just not good enough? What I want to tell you right now is that's not the truth. I want to encourage you and tell you what the truth is. And the truth is, is that you are one of a kind. There's no one on this earth with your fingerprints. You are unique. And there's only one of you on this planet. And so we need you. Your gift that you bring, like, the earth needs it. So keep going, guys. You guys are great. You're special. And I believe in you we're rooting for you connect with me as soon as you can on my instagram i would love to hear from you guys we're posting up vids to inspire you to be the best not only in this game but also in life if you guys are looking to get better at fortnite click the link below to go to proguys.com where you can play with the best players in the world sign up for our membership at proguys and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like benji and mongrel so if you want to compete in fortnite you have to check out proguys.com and be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support we really appreciate it all right, guys, it's about that time. Sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy, that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. So, communication is one of the biggest skill gaps in the squad's meta. You might see squads like Mongrels and Boogas always calling out literally everything they see, from hearing footsteps to spotting people in the storm to getting damage on an opponent, and just so much more. So, communication, guys, is absolutely key in squads because there's just, you know, so many people, and without knowing what your teammates are doing, you can easily get separated and stranded. So, let's take a look at a situation and show you why communication is so important. Your team is on high ground, and there was only one squad left below you. So one of your teammates gets some damage off of an enemy and decides to push down. Cool, he's probably going to get the kill. However, none of you go with him because he didn't tell you anything and he just simply bounced. He gets destroyed in a 1v4 and puts the rest of your team in a bad situation. And now this one mistake could easily lead the entire squad to losing. You're on the low ground now, right? In the same situation. In fact, you're the player who gets hit for 100. The second you get hit, you box up and immediately tell your team that you got hit hard. That way, they're able to box up and make sure that you're safe while healing. You get to 200 HP as one person from the other team pushes in. You get a free kill on them and turn it into a 4v3. You're now in a much better spot thanks to your communication. So one of the best ways to practice your communication as a squad is to participate in a 1v4 box fight or zone wars and make it a point to call out every single thing that happens. So given enough time, it's going to become second nature and you're basically going to do this automatically. You can do it. I also want to let you guys know that we're going to be announcing the winner of our 5,000 B-Bucks giveaway. Oh my goodness, 5,000 B-Bucks? Wow. So we're going to be doing that on one of our future videos, so please stay tuned for that. If you're new and you have no idea what I'm talking about, all you need to do is subscribe, all right? Just subscribe to this channel and comment Pro Guides giveaway down below. If they try to push in without their team. The issue here, my friends, is that you're essentially pushing yourself into a 1v4 without your teammates. This will almost always lead to disaster. That's why this second tip on our list is pushing together. If you've ever tried solo squats, it's obviously pretty difficult, okay? Four people are focusing on you at the same time. You're probably getting sprayed pretty hard and it's just overall an extremely difficult thing to do. Now, picture this same thing, but it's in arena now where most players have a lot of experience and really know what they're doing. That's a plain old recipe for disaster. The thing about squads is that, you know, the majority of squads will have this problem. They're all going to push to their own, and they're going to try to score as much damage or as many kills as possible, while completely ignoring at the same time what's happening with their teammates. They're going to get into their own little fights, and if one opponent gets a lucky one pump or a high damage shot, then it'll turn it into a 3v4, and they'll push into one of their teammates' fights. Then it's a 2v4. Then they're going to push and help their other teammate, and you can probably see where this is going. It's not looking so good. The issue with this strategy is like, not only will you be completely outnumbered and probably get double teamed if one teammate gets knocked, but you're going to be so far away that if one person gets into a very bad situation, you're not going to be able to help. So the double teaming is a given, guys. If you employ this fighting style, every single fight is going to be a 50-50. 
All right, so check this out. The best way to avoid having this problem is to once again play 4v4s and focus on teamwork. Everyone say teamwork. That's what I'm talking about. And playing close together. That way you can avoid these annoying 50-50 fights and always be there if your teammates need your support. One more amazing thing about this strategy is that you can all target one or two people and cut down on your opponent's team slowly until they're all gone. This is one of the secret strategies a lot of pros use when they win their fights. You know, one thing about squads that people fail to realize is how placement is everything. In total, you know, like from winning a squads game, you get 180 points. Top six grants you 60 points. Top four grants you 30. Top two is another 30. And then the victory royale is another 60. My goodness. So guess how many kills you need to equal one win? Hmm. <laughs> you know, believe it or not, you need 36 kills. 36. That's more than a quarter of the lobby. With the low score per kill and the insane score for placement, it's no wonder why W keyers are staying in the lower leagues when it comes to squads. Kills are just so much more important in solo arena than in squads. 20 points per kill compared to five. That's crazy. So now we understand the importance of placement. So how do we actually go about getting more placement points? Good question. First off, get kills out of your head, like right now. Don't even think about it. Sure, kills are very nice. I mean, who doesn't want a kill in, in a game? I, I get it. But just for a few extra points, I just don't think it's worth it, man. I don't think it's worth risking anything for. So in early game, you know, when going for placement, how about this? Check this out. Try to land at the edge of the map at a place like craggy cliffs, dirty docks, misty meadows, or any other spots that aren't heavily contested. Look up the whole place, grab as many materials as possible, and head out towards the edge of the first and second zones. So avoid any engagements if possible. Next, once the third zone hits, set up a big base out of metal and just play from there. That's easily the best strategy when playing for placement because usually by the second zone, half or even up to 70% of the lobby is already gone, depending on which league you're in. Now with most of the lobby being gone, now focus on making safe, low material rotations. One technique you might want to utilize is the triangle tunnel. To do this tunnel, simply build a wall to your right and place a ramp right next to it, just like this. This will cover you from all angles, and it only takes like 20 materials per square. Isn't that nice? So, squad chemistry is one of the most important things in competitive squads. The more you play together, guess what? The more you're going to be able to understand one another's play styles and strategies, and the better you're going to be able to perform together as a result. I say this all the time on my Insta. Chemistry is everything. Do you guys share the same heart? Do you guys have the same values? Do you guys want the same things? Okay, it all matters. You know, we've already expressed the importance of practicing 4v4s in creative, but hear me out, guys. 4v4s are amazing, like they're really cool and all, and one of the best ways that pros practice and build chemistry. People argue that they can even be better than scrims because in scrims, you're going to be able to run into eight squad fights per hour, assuming, you know, like two fights per game and four games per hour. However, in creative, each squad fight lasts about one minute. So you're going to be able to fight about 60 times per hour. Yo, like that's almost eight times more fights. The best way to find an opponent for 2v2s is to look into one of the two discords, either Atlantis Scrims or T1 Scrims, and type in the looking for group chat that you're looking to 4v4. Someone's going to DM you, and you're going to be able to add each other. Next, head into the creative hub and type this code into one of the rifts. This is the code for the box fight map by Fiber. Have one team switch to team two by navigating to the menu and going to team select, and one team stays on team one. Then simply start the game and play until one team reaches 10. Okay, so now that you know how to do 4v4 box fights, try it out with your squad, man. 4v4s help with communication, they help with chemistry, and you know what? They also help build your mechanics. Everything on this list is amazing and all, but the one thing that you should take away from this video is that you need to put in the time to practice. Everybody say practice makes perfect. You already know. Being good at squads is difficult because there are so many people. It can take a long time before you can understand one another's play styles and master the strategies you need to get placement and get a bunch of points. So remember that in arena, it's supposed to take a long time, all right? And reaching Champions League, come on now, you already know, that's going to be something that you can't do in a day or two. So we recommend that if you're trying to reach Champions League, which you can, which you all can, I believe in you, I'm telling you, you got to dedicate at least one or two hours a day to practice. I know some of you guys are having hard times to get that time because you have other commitments and all that stuff. We get it. So you just got to try to get it in when you can. Along with a few arena sessions per week should be enough to push you guys into champs and get you plenty of practice with your squad so you can all excel in tournaments along with arena. Being a brand new playlist, Squad's Arena is definitely going to develop and become better understood as the seasons progress, you know. However, even though not much is known yet about the meta, these are the top five best tips you should always be using. Use these tips as a squad and you're going to be guaranteed some nice results.
All right, so we're going to go over this one more time. So first off, communication is absolutely key. Make sure your teammates know what you're doing and what's going on is an absolute must. Second, pushing and fighting as a squad is absolutely crucial, and it's going to help you guys, like, dominate your fights. Third, playing for placements is the best way to grind points in squads this season, as it takes 36 kills to equal one win. Creative, my friends, is an amazing tool to practice and get better with your squad. And 4v4 box fights are amazing for squad practice also. Finally, it's going to take some time. It's not going to happen overnight to become a really, really good squad. So keep grinding, keep grinding. Don't give up. Don't surrender. I'm telling you, the sky is not the limit in life. So you got to keep going. All right, guys, once again, it's the motivation guy. That's right, the one and only Keith Allen, your number one fan. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. I'm putting up posts to inspire you guys to not only be great in this game, but also in life. That's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES when you make any sort of purchases. You know, it just really helps us out, and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.